Hey there! Today I have for you a bit of a rarity, I think, and I was not really able to find a lot of information about this pen. What happened here was a desk drawer was opened and this came out. I don't know much about it, I can't tell you much about it, there isn't much to discuss about the pen when you look at it, but this is the Birol Fontaine. And it is a fountain pen, so I thought we should at least put this on the channel. If you have any more information, like prices, etc., please comment, because, again, I, I, I was not able to find a lot of information about this online. Okay, Biro, interesting company uh, that uh, makes very affordable pens. Uh, this is a one-way pen. It's a disposable pen that you may be able to re-ink if you pull out the nib and feed with pliers but it's pretty much one reservoir of ink in the barrel, as far as I can tell, and that's it. So, I will cover the parts of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I don't have a whole lot to say, but I thought at least it would be interesting, if, not, if nothing else, and for historical purposes, to show off the pen on this channel. So, here we go. I couldn't find it online, so maybe you can buy it somewhere, but if you want to buy one, that may be too bad. I don't know if that's still available. Top of the pen, nothing simple plastic clip that is really quite stiff so it doesn't work superbly but because it's plastic it's probably going to slide into a pen pouch or pocket fairly easily transparent cap dotted with pink ink that came preloaded in the pen it says barrel fontaine there simple barrel end cap nothing special the whole pen is basically a large cylinder in pink and that's pretty much it. The cap pops off, can be posted if you want to, which makes for a pretty reasonably sized pen, I would say. You have the section. Section is uh, yeah, tapered. That's the best way to describe it, I think. Has this interesting nib. This is a steel folded nib. So it doesn't even have tipping, they just take the steel plates of the, uh, of the nib and they kind of fold that so that you get a, a folded nib, as they call it. No tipping, uh, those are inexpensive nibs, that's a very inexpensive way to, to create nibs. So they're not considered to be the best nibs in the world. Very simple uh, plastic feed and you see this is a very tapered scenario going on here as well. And that's pretty much it. So the section, yeah, I mean, it is sort of a section. You can hold it, you can post it, you don't have to post it. Very cylindrical, uh, simple model. And that's it. I can't tell you much more about the pen because I don't know anything else about the pen. A couple things I can tell you, though. What do I like about it? This has been in a desk drawer for years, must have been years, because nobody knew it was there. It's open, it comes out, we go to every member in the household and say, do you know what this is? And I said, well, I don't know, I've never seen it before. So, heaven knows how this got here, but in any case, I, I pull off the cap and it wrote straight away. Now, that's impressive, and that's the same thing I would expect from, say, a Pilot Varsity. Those things, they're strange disposable pens, but guess what? They work really well. I just found out about this interesting feature. Um, okay, so it wrote straight away. Is it the smoothest writing experience in the world? Of course, obviously this is a fantastic nib with a superb smoothness that is unparalleled. I mean, what do you think? It's a folded nib. It's adequate. It's not super smooth, but it'll get the job done for sure if you need to have a fountain pen. Interesting piece. It's plastic. Things I don't like about it. It feels cheap. It it really does, and this tapered section, it, it doesn't really work. It, it just it just doesn't really work. It's not very comfortable. It's This ridge in particular at the bottom is very sharp. You feel that. It's nothing to really hold on to. Your fingers kind of slide around. But hey, that comes with the territory. I'm expecting this pen, I mean, were I to venture a guess, two euros price? I don't know. I think that would be a realistic assessment of its its uh, its qualities. But hey, that can be fun. So I just want to show you this pen, uh, the Birol Fontaine. I uh, I know I couldn't say a whole lot about it. I apologize, uh, but I think it's more interesting to see how it writes anyway. So let's do that. 
High resolution pictures of this beautiful piece will be on the website sbrebrown.com as well as its dimensions. Hope it was useful guys so far and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Birol Fontaine. After what was apparently about 20 years it still writes, and there was some nondescript fine medium, a bit more on the fine side, and the ink is what came in it, some pink ink. Which kind of makes me assume that uh, this came in other colors too. can't imagine they only made a pink one. Must have been a blue one or a black one. Nib is not particularly smooth, but it's surprising it works after all this e uh, all these years. Uh, the ink is actually a pretty nice girly pink. I mean, that's a, not a terrible color. Fast writing. Pretty scratchy, and you can see there's definitely a bunch of skips. Uh, as to its wetness, now of course this could have dried out a little bit over time, but at least it writes. It's not a very wet writer. Line variation. This pen does not like that. So I don't think you should get this for its line variation or flex. Um, reverse writing is actually really smooth, but the pen is too dry for that and nothing comes out. So there is no reverse writing. And that's all there's to it. A piece of history, people. Even if it's not the world's greatest pen, I think it deserves a spot in the list of pens I've reviewed simply because it is. And there you have it. I hope this was useful. And uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.